lot of focus was in the consumer side of things, right? The faster speed and all those things. So what is the difference of 5G, right? So today we will actually talk about how it impact businesses, which is the industry, as well as consumers, of course, and entrepreneurs, because I actually give similar talk by focusing on the ecosystem of 5G to a bunch of investors before. And they are quite interested to know, okay, what are the companies that they can invest in, right, in the 5G world? So we will touch upon that a little bit, okay? And of course, okay, 5G is a part of connectivity, right, just like all other wireless uh, network. Okay, a quick introduction of myself. Uh, usually I don't put the company name because I used to present to government and defense <laughs> industry, so better don't talk about the company name. So today I'm actually a fellow and adjunct lecturer for a few uh, IHL, including NUS, and uh, also uh, another university and also some training academies like FinTech Academy. Right? Uh, I'm a partner in a regional ICD conglomerate based in Singapore. And uh, I'm also the vice president for the Cloud Security uh, Alliance Singapore chapter. Okay, past what makes me able to talk 5G, right? I was uh, 20 over years in telecom industry, covering from the software services and also the infrastructure and hardware, right? Uh, I was the founding CEO of the joint venture between Grab and Ping An, Good Doctor, and also SoftBank actually, right? And then uh, I was with a Chinese telco giant, which I don't need to name it, you probably know, right? Uh, the one that was leading in 5G, but Singapore didn't choose it, yeah? So, uh, and of course, I'm in, for those of you who are in the telco industry, you will know that BSS, OSS is actually important. It stands for Business Support System, which is actually your billing system. So if you are a Singtel M1 Starhub subscriber, you'll receive your bills. So that is part of the BSS systems. If you go into a, a telco, Right, want to ask for a new line activation that is part of your OSS system, operation support system, which talks about network provisioning. So I come from this world uh, for many years. And it's important because uh, instead of just focusing on the infrastructure, right, the BSS OSS actually is the business of the telco because how you actually come up with price plan, how do you actually come up with data bundles to charge a client and how to use it, actually is the capability of such systems. And uh, okay, the others I wouldn't talk too much about that, uh, telco related, right? Consulting giant from America, uh, British Telecom, joint venture, etc. Okay, so maybe we do a quick Mentimeter, if you don't mind. Right, you can scan the QR code using your phone, or you can go to the website of menti.com, uh, key in the code 97274716. For those who are online, you can just click on the link, right? Uh, if someone can put the link in the chat, then someone can just click it, yeah? Then let's take a look uh, of your understanding of 5G. So basically, I conduct classes uh, for NUS on 5G, and very interestingly, uh, we always get about the same answer for every classes, okay? So type in one word, you can have three choices. What comes to your mind when it comes to 5G? Let's take uh, 10 seconds, more, oh, sorry, 15 seconds more, <laughs> okay? We can start looking already, you can start keying in, so maybe don't mind helping to press the S. Okay, so this is what we see. You can keep on keying in, then the word cloud, this is the Menti word cloud, we'll keep on changing. The one with the most number of answers will appear the biggest and in front, so you can see fast, speed, connectivity. These are the one that most people think about, right? What other things? Uh, speedy, high speed, they are all similar. So there's a lot about speed and fast, right? Which is not surprising because actually almost every class that I teach, or even when I talk to people, people say 5G is about speed, right? Just like 4G is about speed, 3G is about speed, right? Okay, so that's not wrong, but uh, 5G is more than just speed. Lah. If not, whether consumer want to really pay for it, whether telcos want to invest now or invest later, or maybe like in the uh, Middle East country, they actually leapfrog, right? Some of them don't go through 3G world, they go straight to 4G. So why do you want to go 5G when today some of them already talking about 6G, right? Shall we wait or shall we go straight into 5G, uh, go into 6G, right? So it has to be offering more than just speed. Okay, I think most of the answers are similar, fast speed connectivity. Some talk about IoT, which is good. Okay, the rest are too small. Efficiency, faster connections, capability. Okay, smart. Okay, Ken. So, so I think uh, it's very similar to most classes, la, fast and speed. Let's take a look about 5G. What is beyond speed for 5G? Okay. So very quickly, right? For those who are old enough, I started my working life from the 2G world. La, so I use a 2G phone. In fact, uh, I was launching 3G uh, in 1999, 2000 in Singapore. 
for a BSS system for a local telco, right? And then that's where we do what we call a system migration from 2G to 3G. So for those of you who are old enough as me, you probably heard about things like EMS, ETEX, these are the 2G kind of, uh, uh, or even 1G kind of technology, right? So you can also see almost every 10 years, there is one generation of mobile technology, right? Uh, maybe 2030 will be the 6G world, uh, yeah, we don't know, or maybe even faster. So in the 1G world, I think all of us uh, probably own enough to see this phone before, or maybe even use this phone, it's called the Taka Ta phone, uh, or water bottle phone, right? So basically you use it mainly for voice calls, right? And it gives you the mobility that you can do calls without sitting at home or in the office doing a fixed line, right? So this is actually the uh, 1G, the first generation of mobile technology. The second generation, I think this is really changing the world to some extent, if you ask me. Because I remember uh, before we used the 2G phone, I was using a pager, right? Because I work in a semiconductor wafer fan. So uh, midnight, production got issue, huh? <laughs> then message you, you need to check your pager. It started off with, I have to call a call center and tell me the message. Then later, Motorola come out with a pager that you can see the words, right? So it's an improvement and it's very fun. Huh? But it really changed the world when I can use a Nokia. I think I still keep this Nokia phone, by the way, because it's for memory sake. Huh? So this Nokia phone really helped us to, to uh, drive the adoption of a wireless technology because we can actually realize that hey, a small phone like this, I can make calls and I can do SMS, right? And this is why in the te telco industry, right, a lot of people are talking about you must have a killer application mm -hmm. if you want to move from one generation to another generation. So the killer application of 2G, many people will say it's actually SMS or text messaging, right? So this is the 2G world. So what is in the 3G world, right? The killer application really comes about and drive the adoption of 3G yeah, is using data, right? Again, data is not just about uh, uh, you can do WhatsApp, you can surf internet. You need the actual application. So in the 3G world, right, people realize that, hey, I'm so happy with my SMS already. Why do I need data, right? So actually, when we first launched 3G, it didn't really pick up as fast as we want it to be because people are happy with what they have. Right? And then the phone that time, you imagine you use a Nokia phone. I don't know how many of you have the experience using that Nokia 3210 phone to do uh, internet, uh, also quite slow. And in between, you have GPRS and other technology. And then BlackBerry come out also, you have the Edge technology. So I can do most of the thing. Why do I want to have 3G and pay more, right? So it didn't really take off as fast as we want it to be until Apple come out with a nice phone that we can use an iPhone to do data, mobile internet, surf internet, right? So with the infrastructure, the speed, without the handset, it actually didn't take out very fast. And later you realize more and more, right? As we move into 5G, uh, you need the ecosystem, right? A telco is the ecosystem to really drive the adoption of 5G, right? Without the ecosystem, you can have the fastest uh, internet, fastest infrastructure. It doesn't help to drive the adoption, right? People do not want to pay more, okay? So 3G actually is the data world, the mobile internet that people can surf internet. And there's this term called OTT over the top that came out. So imagine when it comes to 3G, uh, how many of you do uh, IDD001? Or maybe, okay, they have a, a voice over IP technology called uh, Singtel is V019, Starhub is 018 or whatever, right? That you can use voice over IP to make international call cheaper. Right, but last time we used 001, if you still remember, lah, then followed by the number. And it's so expensive. But when WhatsApps come, how many of you still use IDD? So there's a big erosion of revenue for the telcos. Yeah? And, uh, and data world is the 3G world. Okay, so what's the killer application for 4G? So everyone's so happy already with 3G. Right? You can surf the internet, you don't need to always use a laptop. Right? You can uh, do OTT, you don't need to make expensive IDD calls. So why do you need 4G? Right? Again, if it's just faster speed, right? Right, that's one thing, yes. But again, 4G didn't, I, I was launching 4G in Taiwan before Singapore launched it, uh, by the way, in 2012, 2013, right? They were the first few in, ta in the world to launch 4G before Singapore, right? And 4G also didn't take off. Again, you need an ecosystem, as I said. Uh, for those of you who are interested, now we can discuss more. 4G in Taiwan, they started with a different frequency band, right, which is the 700 megahertz which didn't really have the ready handset to support that, right? So again, it's an ecosystem. You can have the network, you can have the spectrum already. If you don't have the ecosystem such as devices, you may not be able to drive the adoption fast enough, right? So the 4G in Taiwan didn't take off for a while, although they spent so much money bidding for the spectrum, right? 
And then in Singapore also, uh, we didn't really want to pay a lot of money for 4G because it was just faster download speed, nah, especially for the older folks. I don't really watch a video that fast. I don't really need to download that fast, right? So to some extent, it was a forced adoption because they start retiring 2G and all those things you need to move, right? But again, for the younger and the mid-generation, the killer application of 4G, people will generally think that it's actually social media and video, right? So again, today, you think back five years or six years ago, right? When you don't have TikTok, when you don't watch YouTube on, uh, on your mobile phone so often, when you take a bus and take an MRT, you don't watch videos, right? But now it's like a common place already. Everybody's doing that, right? Because 4G actually can allow you to do video streaming very well. And because a lot of today's world is about video and social media, right? Even do a resume. Uh, today we see a lot of video resume instead of just a paper resume, right? And then all the thing that we're doing with Zoom and all those things, Imagine if you use 3G, I don't know how many of you still on 3G, huh? there's still 3G network in Singapore. You try doing Zoom, uh, one, one hour lecture Zoom on uh, 3G, see how, how can you tahan the, the speed. Huh? Okay? So again, the application really come to help to drive the adoption. Okay? So the clear application of 4G really is about social media, video, and all these uh, uh, data intensive applications. So what is 5G? Who wants to try? Who wants to try to guess what's the application of 5G? Okay, LT. Smart devices. Okay, you attended classes before, is it? <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, uh, to some extent, it's correct, lah. Huh? IoT may be the application, the clear application of 5G. But to be honest, uh, do it without much time, uh, so I cannot cover too much. Actually, the question mark, lah. Right? Because 5G has not been really available to everyone in public yet. Uh, there are many use cases that the telco ecosystem say this is the clear application that's going to drive the 5G adoption, all those things. But to be honest, nobody really know. Right? How much of it is really being charged? How much do we know that consumer or enterprises want to pay? It's still a question mark. There are many ideas, but which one will be the clear application is a question mark. In fact, uh, I try to think of something different. IoT definitely is one of them. But if you look at it, uh, there was a talk about, okay, tablet kind of a phone, right? That you can, a foldable, you can open up so that you don't need to carry your laptop, your tablet, and other things. So people did, if you look at it, I think about three years ago, when Samsung and even uh, Huawei tried to launch phone, they launched all this foldable phone, saying that, hey, tomorrow uh, you use foldable phone enough, that will drive your 5G adoption, right? But actually, it didn't take off. Nowadays, if you go to the shop, how many foldable phones are there? <laughs> Not many, eh? okay? The other one is, uh, this is a very interesting company I visited in Shenzhen. It's called Royal, R-O-Y-A-L-E. They does very thin panel that you can put on your shirt, put on the cap, right? put on the t-shirt, that you can actually see the screen. You can watch your video on your cap if you want. Right? But they, put, they manufacture very thin, fold, uh, thin layer of screens that can be embedded into different parts of things. And again, they say this is something that can drive 5G adoption. But does it really work? We don't know yet, okay? But of course, you see many 5G videos, they are showing things that you probably, when you do running and all those things, you can have, have all these things so-called implanted or embedded on your skin or, or so-called on your shirt and all those things, yeah? So these are some ideas about 5G. But you can see it's still very consumer-based, right? But today we will see that actually 5G, today if you talk to any of the telco ecosystem, including the three telcos, and the uh, equipment manufacturers such as Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia, they will say 5G will be the enterprises that's going to drive the adoption, okay? And we'll see why, okay? So if we look at everyday's life, right, the, as a consumer that we are more familiar with, because we always have two lives, huh? one is our personal life as a consumer, the other one is our corporate life working in certain industry. Actually, now there's a third life like, in the metaverse, right, that <laughs> we can talk about, okay? But if we look at everyday's life, right, 5G has been... Uh, being positioned as something that you can do all these things, right? The first thing is definitely about virtual reality, reality, VR or AR, augmented reality, or MR, mixed reality. So all these things are the ones that, okay, I have what I call the digital twins, right? So I built something that is similar or mimicking like a 3D modeling uh, of what the real thing is about. Then I can do all the simulations here, right? So this is what the AR, VR is about. And one very interesting thing, I do agree this is an uh, application, maybe killer application, uh, that will drive the initial 5G adoption. 
Why? Because I actually saw a few things. Personally, I'm involved in healthcare industry. So there is a Korean company that does AR, VR content that you can do CPR training. Okay? So you can press on the, the, the fake body and then it will have different sensors that it can pass the data over and you can see whether you do the right thing or not. And when I was in UK uh, three years ago in a mobile seminar, uh, there's this thing that I always like to talk about. There's a UK company that does a fireman training. Okay, so uh, amateur firemen, you cannot just send them to a fire scene, right? They may do something wrong and they die inside. So what they do is they send you into like a metaverse kind of uh, the fire scene, right? Like playing a game, la, like in the AR, VR gaming, right? So they send the new and young uh, firemen go in, and then if they do something wrong, then they will be dead. But they in the metaverse, okay? So I, I thought this is something good for AR, VR training. And of course, you can do it today with your 4G and other wireless technology or wired technology. But 5G actually helps you for the mobility as well as the speed, right? And later on, there's a term called latency that we'll talk about, that uh, if you have low latency, all these things will not have so much delay. They will help you to have a more smoother experience, okay? So that's AR, VR. Of course, live streaming as a consumer, we are very familiar with it. Lah. Yeah, we use a lot of that. And then the other one is drones. I think just now the lady mentioned about IoT. I'll classify drones, I'll classify autonomous vehicle to some extent belonging to that group of, you call it IoT, right? They may not be really the IoT, but I'll group them as the IoT, where you use certain capability of 5G that we'll take a, take a look later, right? That you can do many of these connected things. We actually call them connected things, right? Okay, so drones definitely, today you can fly drones already without 5G. Right, but with 5G, your drone's applications can be much more. Okay? And one of them that we quoted here is called the HD Video Drone Application. So there are actually two keywords here that is using the 5G capability. One is your high definition, maybe 4K or even 8K. And then the other one is drone applications. And what is not written here, but is also using 5G, is your edge computing processing of your data analytics. Okay? Very quickly, so just now is the AR, VR, live streaming, connected things that is using 5G, or that will use 5G, or that will drive 5G uh, adoption. What other things that may drive 5G adoptions, right? I think again, robots, right? Whether it's outdoor autonomous robots or any type of robots. There are so many robots running around today. If you go to a reservoir, there's a petrol robot. You go to uh, SGH, there is a TAMI robot that do a, a wayfinding and concierge, right? There's so many robots out there. Right. Again, you may ask me, uh, there are already so many robots, so I don't have 5G, uh, why do I need 5G, right? This is again tying back to the, one of the capability, like the connected things, what 5G will bring further from what you already have today. Okay? The other thing is smart metering. So some of you may be staying in some HDB estate that is already having all the smart meters. We always say there are three meters, the gas meter, the electricity meter, and the water meter. Right, so again, the smart metering allows, is part of the smart nation or smart city kind of initiative, right? It can allow the con collect collection of all the data to some extent near real time or real time, do analysis real time or near real time, right? And then it can advise whether the PUB or sink power or the consumer on how to better use the uh, different uh, gas and pow power and uh, water itself. So the smart metering helps in monitoring all these things and doing the data analysis. Okay. The other one is smart sensors and traffic management. You can see this is the ideal world that in the smart cities that we, we wanted it to have, right? So you can have people crossing the road and then uh, if it is a blind man or if it is a certain thing that someone's speeding or crossing the red light, all these things you will have the smart connection that can stop some or prevent some of these accidents from happening, right? There's already people testing uh, autonomous wheelchair, right, uh, from from a local company that is crossing the road itself and then detecting and the smart traffic light can see that, okay, there's a smart wheelchair going on, so I need to maybe uh, turn to red light uh, slower or something like that, right? So all these smart sensors and traffic management is already being tested currently as well, right? Some of them leveraging on 5G capabilities, okay? So these are some of the applications that you may see that is already in our everyday life or that may come more and more in our everyday life, especially uh, leveraging on 5G capabilities. Okay, so very quickly, the world is chasing 5G. You can see this is a video from different parts of the world launching 5G over the past two, three years, right? But if we look at the uh, quick statistics, uh, 
uh, there, are there are 71 countries, 174 operators already launched 5G, uh, if we do not already know. Singapore already launched 5G, although it's at the so-called trial stage and not 100% coverage. Right? This is already happening, right? And there are only about uh, close to 300 over, uh, sorry, close to about 150 or 160 countries. So I'll say half of the world already launched 5G. Okay? And then 5G spectrum ready. Again, this one we will not be able to cover today. Right? Uh, some of you may ask me, okay, Singapore has been talking 5G for about two and a half years. So why is it taking so long? What's uh, the reason? Right? Is it infrastructure? Is it device? Or what is it about? Actually, one of the reasons is about spectrum readiness. Some of the spectrum that we are using or we are going to use for 5G is actually currently or was being used by some other application such as uh, satellite and others. Right? Similarly, in Taiwan, uh, they actually retired all the 3G two years ago because they are going to use some of the spectrum that was used for 3G for 5G itself, right? So the spectrum, again, I cannot cover the technical details today, right? Uh, that may be used, is actually used by other applications and reasons, okay? Then, uh, okay, subscriber globally, they are close to 300 million already. The, it's not so much on the number, but the year-on-year -year growth. It's 36% year-on-year growth. So like it or not, right, whether the telco force you or not, very soon all of us will be on 5G. But again, consumer on 5G is just one part of things. More important is how the enterprises can use 5G for. Okay. The other one is the smartphones, right? So this is actually a lesson learned from 3G world uh, and even 4G. If you don't have the right ecosystem, such as the devices, uh, you may not be able to drive the adoption of 5G fast enough. Two examples I quoted you, right? 3G really take off when iPhone is introduced. 4G didn't take off in Taiwan because the use of 700 megahertz, which not many people actually want to manufacture devices for that frequency band. Okay, so actually, if you notice, uh, I think about four or five years ago, we all already have uh, seen 5G phones in the market before we even built the network for 5G. Right? So lessons learned from the olden days, uh, all the manufacturers try to build many or manufacture many 5G ready phones. Okay? So this is what is uh, the statistics for 5G in the world. But again, like what I asked, what is the killer application? The question mark is there. Right? Nobody really know how can we really monetize 5G. So today, if you ask me later, actually, I don't have an answer. What is a 5G price plan? Right? Is it by 10 gig charge a certain amount or 100 gig charge a certain amount? Or do I charge by application? Or do I charge uh, voice and data bundle? Right? Actually, nobody knows. People are simulating and building the commercial model of it still. Right? Okay. So, run quickly. So, comparing 5G with 4G. Okay, uh, I think just now we all talk about speed, right? So speed, you can look at it more from a throughput, the second pillar, right? That uh, we always think that, okay, 5G is about faster speed than 4G, which is true. It's uh, probably 10 times faster, right? And 10 times better throughput. But 5G offers some other capabilities that 4G don't, or be much better than 4G, right? Latency. So latency, uh, in a layman term, you can imagine that you watch a video or you do something uh, that is needing a real-time uh, response, for example, autonomous vehicle, right? So you give a, a command from the central control to the autonomous vehicle itself, or you want to do a robotic surgery, right? Uh, in Singapore, the robotic arm is doing the surgery, and then someone from US is giving a command. You need to pass the information through a wireless network, right? So if it is 5G, you get sub millisecond uh, response time, the latency, okay? That means less than one millisecond, you can receive the the instruction, you can do something already. But 4G, you need 30 to 50 milliseconds. So imagine you start counting. Uh, milliseconds is very, very fast to you, uh, but you start counting, and if it's a life and death situation, right? Uh, one millisecond, two milliseconds can cause a big delay already, right? So that is the real mission critical applications that need the latency capability of 5G, right? But from a layman consumer, very easy, like you watch a video, right? So latency, you probably feel giddy when it's slow, and you, walk, you wear a Google Glass, a Google Glass, right? And then you try to play a 3D game or, or something like that. Then you have latency, then you feel giddy, right? So those are the layman thing, okay? So latency is one of them. Uh, it's 30 to 50 times faster than 4G, okay? Connections-wise, I think the lady mentioned about IoT, and I talk about connected things. So this is really the connections, right? So if today you only have one, two, five, less than 10 cameras in this room, Maybe your 4G or even Wi-Fi is good enough, right? Security concern aside, yeah? uh, the technology should be able to support. But imagine you have 100. Imagine this classroom become a smart classroom 
and become a smart uh, city and then subsequently a smart nation where you have millions and millions of connected things together. Then 4G alone or Wi-Fi alone will not be able to support that. And 5G will have the big enough, you can imagine like a pipe, lah, okay? big enough pipe to support multiple and millions of connections to that. Okay? So that is the connectivity uh, connections for 5G. And of course, mobility, we talk about 5G, the traveling speed of 5G is about uh, like a high-speed rail traveling speed. Lah, yeah? So that's very important because you need to pass data all right, in form, in form uh, the applications of what needs to be done. The other thing that we will not cover too much is the so-called network slicing capability that only available in 5G. Although in 4G, we already have what we call the software-defined network, right? and then the network function virtualization. There's a lot of virtualized environment and uh, applications there. Right? So 4G, we already have that software-defined network, and we extend it further. That You can imagine network slicing is like, tomorrow, let's say I want to have all the uh, smart connections. right? I create like a slice of cake that all the thing is there, and then I up the connectivity there, right? Then I want to have all the mission critical, so I create a, a, like a, cake, a slice of cake that have all the low latency there, right? Then I can do the network slicing for different applications, right? The idea of it is really, I have dedicated thing that I can do, everybody is using that, and then I can price it according to the different slices, right? Whoever, because, Again, everyone needs different things. Not everybody needs low latency. Some may need just bad, uh, good connectivity, right? Millions of connections. So if you can price according to the network slices, it helps. Okay? So again, not much time to cover all the details, uh, only 40 minutes. This one we can talk for half a day, uh, network slicing, because it goes back to how you do pricing and all those things. Okay? Okay, uh, why I say 5G, or not just I say, uh, every telco ecosystem is saying that industry or enterprises is actually the one driving 5G adoption. Because how much we as consumer want to pay right, for the faster speed. We don't have life and death applications that's running to some extent. Right? So it's the enterprise who need the low latency when it comes to mission critical applications such as autonomous driving, such as robotic surgery, and so on and so forth. And then we, we are not the one, we probably will be using AR, VR content, right? but who will be paying it? This is a question mark though. Is it us? because it will be passed to consumer who will bring the AR VR content, or is it the AR content builder that's going to, to, to actually pay for it? It's a question mark. Yeah? But we can see that who is going to use 5G most, huh? according to the research report, actually surprisingly healthcare. <laughs> right? Healthcare industry, 21% right, will be using the 5G capability, which again, just now we already mentioned, and we have some use cases we'll take a look later, why, why we think healthcare will be using a lot of 5G. The other one is government, right? Again, government can include your defense and some other industry, right? Transportation, just now we already saw the smart traffic management, that's one example. But don't think of just the land transport, your air transport, your logistic, your fleet management, supply chain, these are all under the transportation as well. Energy utilities, we already saw a smart metering, so that's definitely one part of it. Manufacturing, uh, today a lot of people are already talking about smart factory, robotic arms and all those things. So definitely it's one of those uh, key industry. Okay? So this is what the, some research actually reported that uh, uh, the different industry will be using 5G. Okay? So okay, uh, if you forget everything that I say today, you just need to remember this. That's why I always say, right? if you say you have attended a 5G talk before, right? even if it's half an hour, Please uh, remember this three term. All right. First, I, I make it easy, lah, although people call it the ITU, um, IMT, ITU IMT 2020. I find it very difficult to remember. What is ITU? I have to explain to you what is ITU. What is IMT? I have to explain to you what is IMT. Okay, these are the different regulatory body that is governing the telco. Right? But as a layman or as an industry player who is going to use 5G, you just need to say 5G capability triangle. Right? Very easy to remember. The three unique capability of 5G. One is what we call enhanced mobile broadband, EMBB. Right, the explanation is on the right-hand side. The other, uh, EMBB is really talking about faster speed, better throughput, right? Because mobile broadband ma, enhanced, ma, right? Layman term, very easy to remember. So again, as a consumer, very easy for you to remember. AR, VR content, faster, better throughput, faster speed, right? Less uh, headache, <laughs> right? Less giddiness. So these are all linked to your AR, VR and using the EMBB capabilities of 5G, okay? The other one that's unique, uh, EMBB is actually uh, 4G, you can already do some extent to that, you can even boost it up. Yeah? But the unique one for 5G uh, is actually MMTC, 
massive machine type communication, that's number two. Okay, that's really your smart home, smart building, smart nation, smart cities, right? Again, I, as I said just now, if you have only 10 cameras here or 10 IoT devices, okay, yeah, Wi-Fi, 4G can satisfy your need. You have 100, 1,000, millions, then you need the 5G capabilities of MMTC, okay? Number three is URLC, ultra-reliable, low-latency communication. This is really your mission critical, your life and death situation. Your sub-millisecond response time is very important, right? So again, autonomous vehicle, okay? That's one of it, right? Sub-millisecond probably knocked into somebody already. Robotic surgery, sub-millisecond, maybe the patient cannot wait already, <laughs> okay? So these are very important when it comes to uh, URLC, okay? So these are the three important capabilities that you need to remember when it comes to 5G. Okay, 5G will change and transform industry. So this is a robotic surgery or robotic assistant surgery, right? Okay, then VR, gaming, AR gaming. Just now I talk about the fireman training. I talk about the CPR training, right? AR, VR will be more and more used in education. Okay, what else? Uh, smart agriculture that can establish or extend into smart fishing, smart aquaculture. Right, I was actually doing, uh, not 5G yet, I was doing uh, Saim Dhabi in Malaysia, where they actually, the rubber tree plantation, they actually put IoT devices to measure the U, right, so that they send the rubber tapper to go and tap when the U is there. Okay, so that's something that you can better use your resources, right, when, uh, with the IoT technology. Again, one rubber tree, maybe two, three IoT devices, when you have a rubber tree plantation and you need more IoT devices, that's where your 5G actually add value to that. Okay, this one not so much in Singapore, robotic mining, right? Uh, but again, we can extend to the Singapore context. There is actually trials ongoing at PSA port, right? That uh, instead of sending people to go and check what's wrong at the crane there, right? With the IoT uh, being put there, you can actually, and leveraging on the 5G technology and the connectivity, you can actually only send the people when necessary. So that reduce potentially uh, danger, right? Of uh, serving a more, uh, uh, I would say dangerous, uh, environment and situation, okay? Smart tourism, another very interesting thing, this is again linked to AR, VR capability, wearing your uh, Google Glass or Huawei Glass, right? Uh, I have the experience of uh, wearing the glass and then running a site alongside with a lion in the African safari, la. that's a use case itself, okay? So that's something interesting and uh, now I don't know whether they still have it in the Huawei lab in Singapore in Changi Business Park, they actually took the Marina Bay Sands Right, where you can actually see uh, using the glass that you are really like at Marina Bay Sands. But again, this one you can do it with 4G wireless as well, right? But with 5G, you can really play with it and then uh, you have less delay and better experience. Okay, so these are some of the smart tourism. Oh, live sports, this is something very interesting. So for those of you from telco industry, you probably attend a yearly event in Barcelona, right, before COVID where uh, it's called Mobile World Congress, uh, uh, the MWC, right? One, uh, I think two, three years ago before COVID, uh, everybody liked to showcase a live spot, a live sta stadium to leverage on the 5G technology. Where you go in, of course, you can see the real, real playing, but at the same time, you have social media capabilities where you can uh, rank, rate, comment about the players, comment about goals, right? And then you can do live voting, polling, a lot of things. So again, Imagine a live stadium, right? If everybody is using your 4G network, whether you can support that or not, right? So many massive connections. That's one question, right? Any delay, right? How's the experience? And if you want to do social tracking and interaction, right? And you want to have faster speed, that's where the 5G can actually add value to that, okay? But again, we will not go through details in that because this 5G here may not be the same as the normal 5G that we're going to use it may be using another 5G that is called millimeter wave technology, okay? So, but it's still 5G, okay? Smart manuf manufacturing, I already talked about, okay? Robotics arms, uh, a lot of uh, robots and uh, IoT devices trying to do the uh, different smart manufacturing capabilities, smart agriculture, similar to the smart fishing itself, right? So these are the different industries that people always talk about when it comes to using 5G capabilities. Okay, let's go into two areas. One is education, one is healthcare. That's more interesting and more towards what I've been doing in the past years. Lah, okay? One is uh, VR remote education, right? So today, I think uh, not just NUS, many 
IHL, right, already trying to do AR, VR learning and training. Two examples I've quoted just now, right? But more important, apart from AR, VR learning, another key thing is about smart classroom, right? So smart classroom, again, I used to remember, this one you don't need 5G also, right? 5G can help to extend it further, is that example, I take attendance. Uh, uh, today, probably we still sign, uh, but uh, when I was in China, the attendance is already facial recognition. Uh, so I go in, they already know I attend or I didn't attend. So that's one of the first initial stage of a smart classroom, right? And more and more interactions, right? Uh, probably in Singapore, we don't really see too much of that because uh, mobility is not really an issue. We can travel quite easily, right? But in a large country like in China and in Indonesia, where in the more rural area or less accessible area, right, the smart classroom, the telepresence, the AR, VR actually helps in that, okay? And again, the other thing is that uh, more and more we need to learn from around the world, right? You can't be pot potentially flying everybody everywhere, right? So the AR, VR learning that is through a dedicated network, right? In the olden days, we probably need what we call a lease line, yeah? for that dedicated network to provide the speed that you want. But in future, we can use 5G for that, okay? And then I actually did a talk representing NUS uh, over here. I think about three months ago uh, in a Malaysia talk that is for ASEAN. So I actually talk about smart classroom, right? Attendance taking and fireman training, which I talked about just now. But there's a Korean professor, uh, Prof Lee, also talk about uh, AI private tutor, right? Again, how 5G and AI will work together. Huh? This one we will discuss it uh, when we have time, uh, more time, okay? But basically, smart education leveraging on 5G also talks about an uh, ecosystem of skills, and 5G is one of them, okay? Okay, wow, time flies. Smart healthcare, uh. so very simple, I just put three cases, uh, okay? The three capability, uh, remember, right? EMBB, URLC, and MMTC. So your EMBB, right, is really AR, VR type of education. The CPR education is one of them. So. Many people, they're not, or many hospitals around the world, they're not really use 5G to do actual surgery yet, right? Because life and death. Huh? So how do you start? You start with education, huh? right? So you can do robotic surgery education first. That will help you to really practice and experience it before you do the actual thing, right? So ARVR based kind of uh, EMBB capability for remote education in healthcare is one of the very hot topic currently, okay? Second thing is MMTC. So again, we talk about many connected devices in the hospital setting, but actually in Singapore, we talk about healthier SG uh, kind of uh, population health, right? So more and more, we'll have wearables, right? So imagine if you have your home tracking of your health, right? Especially people with chronic disease. Before the person gets sent to a hospital, the data can be passed to the hospital or your, or your uh, doctors already. So all these things, if you can have a good 5G connectivity, your home wearables, your home monitoring devices can actually connect with the hospital systems. Security thing aside, again, uh, we have to discuss it separately, but it will help to actually drive a better health management plan. Okay? The third one is what we talk about, robotic, actual robotic surgery. Right? You need a sub-millisecond response for that to happen. Okay? So this is uh, smart healthcare. That's why healthcare actually has a lot of uh, room for uh, uh, poten potential room for growth in uh, using 5G and more applications here, right? Autonomous vehicle. So uh, you probably heard of people trying to do mobile clinic. So you use the autonomous vehicle that's already happening in China to dispense uh, the medical PPE, right? And also during the COVID situation in Wuhan, they use the autonomous vehicle because people cannot come out, right? To actually do the tele consultation or telemedicine itself. So this is already one example. Robotics, uh, again, concierge robot, wayfinding robot, right, so and so forth. And then uh, video analytics, right, uh, there's this thing called human traffic tracking. So during COVID time, people were all trying, right, uh, I want to limit the crowd going to the hospital areas, it's very dangerous. But you can extend it even beyond COVID, right, you can actually have this tracking so that you can really track whether a lost patient who has dementia, right, you can also track uh, potential uh, crim criminal activities, right? So these are the potential things that can happen using 5G technology and AR, VR, I already talked about it just now, okay? Very quickly, I think you will be interested in Singapore own development, right? So I think we started in 2019, right? That we know, make known to, to Singapore public that we started 5G deployment, right? By end of this year, 
uh, according to this is from IMDA website, lah, I didn't create it. By end of this year, we're supposed to have 50% island-wide coverage of 5G. But from what I know, the latest is we should have 75% already, so faster than expected, right? And then there are different use cases that the government is driving, things like the uh, Industry 4.0 using drones, right? Autonomous vehicle at the capital, together with Capital Land, smart port operations, right? In uh, PSA. So all these are the different applications that's already happening in Singapore. But the more interesting one, it, you read from the news, lah. It's called 5G now at Sentosa, right? Sentosa is uh, covered by Singtel 5G network. So if you do some reading on Straits Times or Googling or watching even YouTube movie, there's one with NTU, right? Singtel with NTU doing an autonomous road sweeper, right? So it's an autonomous vehicle, but do the road sweeping, right? So that's something very interesting. There's another one uh, with Grab, the green color autonomous uh, vehicle, right? With a company called Neolix from China. Uh, they actually do the food delivery and uh, Li Ho drinks delivery also. So all these things you can help to address the uh, FMB resource shortage problem. Okay, so these are some of the things that's already happening. Uh, take a chance to Sentosa if you have a chance. Look at some of these five uh, G uh, use cases and deployment over there. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Okay, so summary of the uh, five G use cases. Again, I always say, uh, remember the three capabilities. Then you can map what are the different use cases or applications that are tied to the three three capabilities. EMBB is really a lot about AR, VR, a lot about speed, a lot about throughput, okay? MMTC is a lot about IoT, connected devices, right? And, um, and smart city, smart home, smart nation, okay? URLC, URLC is a lot about mission critical applications that you need sub millisecond response time, okay? So these are the three key things about 5G use cases. Okay, this is the one I presented to the bunch of investors, they always say, right, hey, 5G is like 3G, 4G, la. so the telco will benefit from it. Yeah, the telco will have to build the infrastructure. So the telco, uh, outside the circle are all the traditional telco players. So you have your telco operators, in Singapore it's your Singtel M1 Starhub, globally you have the bigger one like T-Systems, uh, sorry, T-Mobile, Orange from France, AT&T and so on and so forth. Right? Then you have your system supplier, your Samsung, Ericsson and all those people. Right, then you have your standards who actually define what are the different standards, the 3GPP standards and so on and so forth. And then your equipment, your foundry, which is your wafer fab, uh, who manufacture the semiconductor that you use in your phone. So the outside one uh, are what the people have been benefiting and changing the industry in the, one, the 2G, 3G, 4G world. 5G, yes, they are still playing a part. But more importantly, it's the circle inside. Because of the three capabilities, right, and as I said, you don't have the killer application yet, so whoever come up with a killer application for 5G can be the next billionaire lah, yeah, to buy a good class bungalow. Okay? So EMBB right, is a lot about, again, AR, VR, right? One white space I see, at least in Singapore, I don't see a lot of content provider, developer, or aggregator in the AR, VR. The one I work with are either from China or from Korea or from Japan. The CPR one that did the CPR content for AR, VR is from Korea. Okay? Then the one fireman training is from UK. So I haven't seen something in Singapore yet. Maybe Singapore will have someone who built a certain ARVR content that will drive the adoption. I don't know, okay? So that's one part of it. And of course, ARVR will go into a high definition, your 4K video, 5, 8K video, and so on and so forth. Same thing for MMTC, right? That is your smart home, right? Today, very easy, smart fridge and all those things that you can use at your home. But tomorrow, how can we move beyond a smart home into a smart cities kind of uh, application. That's something waiting for the different players to develop, okay? Then URLC, uh, we already see uh, the Neolix that I talked about from China, right? It is a company that actually came out just recently as well. Okay, I'm reminded I only have one minute left. Okay, 5G ecosystem. I always say 5G, yeah, I think some of you put in the word cloud, 5G is about connectivity. That's correct, right? Because 5G ultimately is still a network that provides you the connectivity. And whatever AR, VR thing that we talk about, these are the ecosystem of different skill sets or applications that we need to use, right? So without AR, VR, your 5G is dummy, okay? Without IoT, your 5G also no use. You have all the pipe, all the big bandwidth for them. You can't use it if you don't have the application. And the application is not built just on 5G. You need your AI technology, you need your AR, VR technology, your robotics, all these things help to drive the 5G adoption itself, okay? 
Okay, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Quite a uh, stop. So this one, I was told that I need to show this. Sorry, you can follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook. Okay, you can do a quick scan. So we actually will publish uh, courses, thought leadership paper about 5G as well. Okay. And then the other one is, uh, there are two courses. Uh, I've been conducting this course called Learn 5G with NUS. Uh, the course is called 5G as a platform for industry transformation. It's a two-day course, right? Uh, if you cannot remember this link, you can search my name 5G. <laughs> it will come up top in the Google search. Or you can search 5G NUS scale. It will come up top at the Google search as well. So we've been conducting these classes to different industry, especially the non-telco, because we have another course for the telco people. Right, so this is a two-day class. We talk about all the 5G fundamentals and telco fundamentals. Then the second day, we talk about business model canvas, BMC, for those of you who have done business classes before, to use BMC to create 5G applications and projects. Okay? And uh, we actually do it. Uh, my first class last year, actually, they submitted to MDA for a competition as well with their 5G uh, use case, which is quite interesting. Okay, so this is a two-day class. You get a certificate of uh, attendance. If you want to get a PC, professional certificate, it's a six-day class, right? Uh, we are launching in October, right? Myself and another colleague of mine called Wai Kong, uh, both of us are EE fellow of NUS, will be conducting this six-day class, right? Uh, it will cover different types of business uh, modeling as well. Okay, so you can email to SOC to ask for the uh, details. Right, three days in October, three days in November is a fully SSG funding. Okay. The technical one will start from January. Okay. Okay, last but not least, uh, I was asked that I need your feedback. So you can scan and give us the feedback there. Okay, I have five more minutes for question. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. I hope uh, not too much information overload. I try to concise right? I can't control the slide. <laughs> They're showing the slide though. Yeah. Which one? This one? Okay, sorry. They are controlling the slide. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> this one? Correct? Okay, can. Okay, so we go to Slido. I'm on a 5G tel. Uh, no, so. Do I answer the first one? Okay. I'm on a 5G telco plan, but I still use the same applications as I've been using with 4G. I wonder how I can benefit more from 5G technology as a consumer. Okay, so again, the, there are a few things. Uh, in order to enjoy the benefit of 5G, uh, again, not just 5G price plan. Uh, I have to say it because some people ask me, I have got a 5G phone. How can I cannot use 5G? Do I need to always subscribe to a 5G price plan? I think you need at least three things. Uh. One is you need to have a 5G phone, which most of the phones are there. Next, the 5G coverage needs to bear. As I said, we are going to only have 75% by end of this year, so there will be some places without 5G coverage yet. Okay? Third thing is you need a 5G SIM card. Nah. So you have a 5G phone, but your SIM card is not 5G, no use. Nah. So please go and change to a 5G SIM card. Most of the telco will provide for free. Nah. So you have this free thing already. Then, actually you can already use 5G. I'm already using 5G nah, sometimes. Okay? But uh, with a 5G price brand, you will be ensured that you are always connected to 5G when there is a 5G coverage. Okay? Application-wise, yes, you are right. So again, today, what are the 5G applications you can use as a consumer? There isn't a lot yet. That's why when we conduct the classes to the telcos here also, right? we are also helping them to come up with business modeling, how to price 5G, what are the things. Right? So one of the key things that many of the telcos are expecting will be your 4K or 8K videos that I'm going to provide that you can use it. So that can be one of your first application. But do you want to pay a higher price just to watch a 4K video on the phone? This one is actually for you to decide, okay? So this is one of the things. The other thing that most recently I saw a company that Jackie Chan, uh, the movie star, invested in Shenzhen. They're trying to do a 3D video creator on a phone and they're trying to work with a local brand in China so that next time you buy this phone, the embedded application from them allows you to create 3D content, okay, 3D content, which today you probably can't do it on your phone. And you may be able to do it on your phone or, or laptop, but you need a 3D goggle, right? So what they are trying to create, nah, that application don't need a 3D glasses. 
Okay, so that's something that uh, I'm still studying because they sent me the investment proposal. I'm still looking at it. So that's something very interesting, uh, if you ask me. And it's invested by uh, Jackie Chan Chan's uh, uh, group of people. Okay, so uh, short answer to that, there isn't a lot of uh, 5G applications yet. Uh, for the consumer, that uh, that's why today the price plan is also not super expensive yet. Once there is a clear application that get people hooked on, you may be paying a higher price that we don't know yet. Okay. Okay. Last, maybe I answer the next question. Hey, sorry. Current local five G use cases seem to be not dominated by conglomerate MNC. Example, Capital. What can SME do to play catch up and leverage on five G? Oh, this is a very good question. So you can actually, I think. Uh, we actually have uh, questions from a lot of SMB uh, how they can monetize 5G. So 5G, one of the key things of 5G links to cloud technology as well, right? So uh, many of the SME will not be able to build their own dedicated data center or private cloud. So you can leverage on the cloud provider, which with the network slicing capability of 5G, right? The telcos may be slicing SME cloud or SME slices that more SME can actually afford to use the cloud together, right? So I think uh, if you ask me, SME play in 5G actually will be more than in the 4G or other world, okay? So this one, uh, they will be more and more. You can talk to your telco like M1, Starhub, and Singtel. They actually have SME-focused plan where you can leverage on, let's say for, uh, Singtel is called 5G Paragon. Uh, that's their 5G uh, uh, multi-edge uh, computing uh, uh, software uh, platform, you can actually leverage on that and you pay a fee, there's a shared fee across different players or subscriber of that service. Okay, so that will help. Okay. Done, okay, so I'm asked to stop. <laughs> Sorry for that, okay. So that's all for today. Uh, it's a bit too much information so hopefully you can remember just one thing the 5g capability triangle okay then the rest sign up for the course then we can talk about it more thank you very much thanks <laughs>